is popping fight fans and welcome to another episode of the mystic hour episode two of 2022 and i am joined by a legend a legend of the sport a legend of combat sports a former mfc champion coach of aj mckee coach of so many people that you might not even know that he's coaching that comes over there to the body shop my man antonio mckee what's up brother how you doing thanks man for having me on the show i appreciate it you know i'm always excited to get on the platform and share my experiences in this uh in this world of mma and not just M mma just life in general you know the walk that i've had to take to get where i'm at it was a, a journey you know what i mean and i'm just thankful and blessed that god has allowed me to make it this far considering the circumstances so i'm just happy to be here to spread the body the good look good you know good news love god and the, the whole nine yards Absolutely. And of course, you want to hear that story, of, of course. And you're on set right now. Not sure what you're doing. If you want to break something for us right here, if you want to spill some of the news. <laughs> well, you know, unfortunately, I was treated real bad by the UFC after being undefeated for like eight years on an eight year run. And I was treated real bad. And, you know, uh, I was very fortunate and blessed to meet a guy like Jake Paul, who's uh, who's saying and doing a lot of things. At first, I just thought it was for the clout. Uh, then I realized it wasn't for the clout. It was actually, he's about the fighters. And so uh, there's something really big getting ready to pop, man. I ain't going to say anything because I'm not supposed to, but within the next week, you're going to hear something big. And, you know, Jake Paul is one of the guys that made it happen. That's awesome, man. I, and I feel like not enough credit is, is given to him. And he's very outspoken about getting these fighters paid. And speaking of paid, AJ just got paid in that Grand Prix million dollar prize. What did he get? his father for Christmas? Anything big, anything crazy that he got you? No, nah, you know, I didn't <laughs> want anything. I'm really, uh, I'm, I'm excited about the fact that I get to take this journey with my son. There's a lot of other people in this world that's unfortunate that don't have a father. And it's even more unfortunate that you have a lot of Afro-Americans that don't have fathers, they're single parents. And so for me, it was just an honor to be able to be on the same platform that I once stood on and him being undefeated. It just made me feel good that I'm still here, uh, you know, and he's undefeated. And, you know, we've had a, a hell of a walk, but it's been a good walk despite the outcome. You know, the outcome was beautiful. You know, the, the beginning, we didn't understand it. We were frustrated. We we're going through it. But then when you put everything, like you say in the scripture, when you put it in God's hands, man, I don't know what it is about this, this, this spiritual realm or whatever is going on. I'm not some holier than thou guy. But let me tell you, man, God is real. Absolutely. And it, he's somebody that just got a lot of money and that's could be an issue for somebody that as young as he is. Is there anything you tell him, like how to keep his head on straight and not to get too overwhelmed with what's happening in that time period? Yeah, you know, I'm a different father. So, you know, what I did is I said, hey, when you win this million dollars, I'm going to give you two hundred thousand dollars cash of it because we work. We have a company. We have businesses, multiple businesses. But uh, I said, I'm going to give you two hundred thousand right off the top and let's see what you do with it. Well, not too long ago, a couple of days ago, I think we sat down and he still got over half of it, which means he's doing well. You know, I thought he was spending a lot on materialistic stuff, uh, but you got to enjoy the fruits of your labor, you know. And so I didn't make it a big deal, but now we're looking at investments and properties and so on. But uh, he's really a good, 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 good kid, a good man. You know, uh, he's doing things the right way. He puts God first. You know, we all fall short, but at the end of the day, he knows who God is. He understands, and uh, he's always seeking to grow. That's awesome. And we haven't seen him since his his victory in July. Is there any reason why we haven't seen him back in uh, in Bellator? Well, you know, you're dealing with these contracts. You're dealing with these management companies. You're dealing with the fact that the sports, it's so new that there is a lot of uh, – adversity to come with it but unfortunately i've been in the game for a long time being with rampage and tito and a bunch of other famous fighters seeing how things were done seeing how things needed to be done and witnessing the outcome of the good and the bad and so i kind of got a pretty good understanding uh how things should be and so right now we're just waiting on the you know everybody to come together collectively and and do what's right for the next level of this game you know he's undefeated he's in a phenomenal fighter, unbelievably skillful out of seven, 18 wins, I think 14 or finishes in the first round. Like what more can you ask for from an athlete that's in a combat sport where styles 
make the difference in fights. And he's shown the same thing consistently, which is he's finished everybody. Yeah, he finished everybody in that in that Grand Prix, which is you've never we haven't seen that before. And do you prefer him being more active throughout the year? Because this is the first time he's not fighting, you know, immediately when the year begins, because usually he fights three to four times per year. Is there anything you do with him to ensure that he doesn't get maybe bored in that time period or to keep him fresh? You know, I'd rather him stay active. He's young. He heals fast. Unfortunately, he hasn't taken any damage. But more importantly, that when, when, when athletes that have money or have a certain amount of cash that they can just blow off, they get bored. And that's where drugs come into play. We've already been down that road. We've already hit the bumps and the dips. And we bounced back stronger. And now uh, I think it's more about now just staying active because he is a young fighter and he wants to fight all the time. Uh, unfortunately, when you're the champ, they can't just fight you all the time. So we're looking to do other sports, possibly go into some boxing, um, you know, just some super fights. Just have some fun with it. Absolutely. I can't wait to see him. If he gets in that boxing realm, that's going to be a lot of fun to watch. But uh, Scott Coker's talk has, has hinted a little bit about Patricio Pitbull being a rematch for AJ. AJ, the first time he fought him, he said it's going to be probably one of his easiest matchups. Do you think the second time around it'd be just as easy or maybe a little bit more difficult? Well, it's always a little bit more difficult because both fighters are now going to be on a little edge. But AJ, in the beginning of the first fight, he was hungry. He, he didn't care what Pete Patricio did. He says, I'm knocking him out in the first round. And so he, you saw that discipline. You saw that focus. This fight, I think Patricio will be a little bit more cautious. Uh, he won't be as hesitant. If he's going to go, he's going to go. He's got something to prove. I think he'll get knocked out again. It may not be in the first round. It may be in the second round. Uh, but, you know, out of respect, I just don't see – there's no threat at all that Patricky Pitbull possesses for A.J. McKee. Um, A.J. is probably the best fighter in the world, pound for pound, skill set for skill set. He's good on his striking. He's good on his back. He's good on the top. He's good at his wrestling. He's great at his jiu-jitsu. Um, I don't think there's too many fighters that actually possess all the weapons like him. Yeah, and, and Pitbull recently relinquished that lightweight title. You think he relinquished that because he didn't want to lose another one to AJ? Well, you know, I, I don't know. But, you know, I think maybe it was part of the negotiation. He'll give up the belt at 155. You get a rematch with AJ. If AJ moves up to 155, he fights your brother. It's kind of the same thing that happened to him, that whole taboo. When he fought Chandler, Chandler knocked him out. Then when Patricio, the Jew, the, the older one, fought Pitbull, he knocked him, he knocked out Chandler. So this was kind of like uh like kind of like a role play switching up, you know what I mean? But uh we we don't have a we don't have any problems making 145 when he does his camps right. He makes weight really easy. That's not easy, but you know, he's a big 145 pounder but he makes weight pretty 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 easy um last weight cut was a little rough because we sat around covid the whole time you know but now he's down to 158 pounds he walks around at 160 um so so i don't see a big deal about cutting 15 pounds 12 pounds 13 pounds that's not a big deal yeah and we talked about this a little bit about me wanting aj to be in the ufc me wanting him to fight that you know different competition where do you prefer AJ to be? You want him to be, obviously you want him to be making the most amount of money, of course, but do you right. want him to be fighting the most competitive fights? Because if we're being honest here, if he beats uh, Patricio again, who else is there left for him to fight within the Bellator realms? Well, to go up to 155 and challenge his brother. Yeah. And become a champ champ. You know, uh, that's 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 easy. Yeah. And he, he's big enough to do it. He can, well, he can get up to 180, 185, but we're very disciplined in his diet, um, preferably, you know, contracts are for a reason. Um, we have to honor our, our contract and fight our three fights and then probably go on and test free agency. Uh, you know, we signed a new deal. We're, you know, we, we really, right now, we're just sitting back waiting, see what all the uh, pros and cons are. Uh, we're also in a management contract with CAA. Which really, to me, you know, um, we need to establish a better relationship with CAA uh, in order to move forward. Um, there's just a lot going on, man. There's a lot going on right now. Yeah, and he went undefeated in that Grand Prix. 
there's been a lot of awards handed out this past year. And honestly, I didn't see AJ mentioned in too many of them. Do you feel there's any specific reason he doesn't get the recognition for doing having such a dominant, you know, career in Bellator? Well, I think again, who put the award ceremony together? Yeah. Whose award ceremony is it? Um, of course, you're not going to glorify other fighters from other organizations if you're the one that's putting the, the award show together. I think Bellator needs to, um, you know, start doing their own so they can be competitive. The, the UFC is obviously, we know, the biggest platform to be on. Yeah. But it doesn't necessarily mean that they have all the top fighters. And I think you've got a chance to see that because you saw Patricio knock out Chandler. Chandler goes over to USC and beats the number top five guy, yeah. knocks him out. Then he loses, but he's losing to the top three fighters in the divisions. What does that say about a young AJ McKee? Very true. That's very, very true. And do you guys tune in to those featherweight and lightweight title fights in the UFC? Are you guys still watching that? Just to, you know, I know what I can do if I was there and there, like watching a Charles Oliveira or watching an Alexander Volkanovsky. Are you guys watching those fights? We watch those fights, and you know what? They're like night and day. My son will walk through those guys. He'll finish those guys in the first, second round, man. He is just so damn good that you don't know what you're going to get, when you're going to get it, and how you're going to get it. Look at his fights. How do you train for a guy like that? You train on the ground? He's ma he's magic on the ground. You train on the striking? He'll take you down because of his wrestling. You train trying to be on top of him? You get your head split open like Pat Kern. Like, what do you do? You think you can stand up and bang, bang, bang? Then... You get knocked out like Patricio. You get kicked in the head. You know, he's just a dangerous guy no matter where he's at. And I think more and more this sport grows. And the bigger the fan base, I believe at some point he will be one of the all-time greatest fighters in the world. I think he's yeah. that already. But, you know, it doesn't pay any benefit for me to think that because, you know, the fans have to determine that. And he has to get on that bigger platform where the fans can see him. Um, I see Bellator doing some great work with CBS. You know, that's going to be really big because that's CBS's is, is international and it's household worldwide. So I think he'll even grow up even bigger. So we're just going to be patient and we're going to do things respectfully in our contracts and maneuver through there. Yeah. And you were there during the Tyron Woodley, Jake Paul two fight, seeing Tyron Woodley, unfortunately get knocked out by Jake Paul. Uh, Tyron Woodley is a guy who's, I'm pretty sure you guys are, are, are good friends. How did you feel seeing that happen? What was your immediate reaction? Um, you know, preparation is everything. Um, Tyron's a good friend of mine. You know, I've, I've trained Tyron for probably over the last 10, 15 years. I've watched him grow in his career. Uh, when you become the champ, there's a lot of distractions, the movies, the videos, the rap songs. I think Tyron just needs to reset, get himself together. Um, he's getting to that age where he starts taking the right fights now and just go out, you know, on a good note. Yeah, and at the same time, during that fight weekend, you had Anthony Taylor fighting against one of the 209 guys, and there was a big scuffle that happened. Uh, you were there, obviously. Do you feel yeah. like they have – what's what's the issue there with with, with Nate and, 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 and AJ? Well, it really started with Anthony Pretty Boy Taylor mm -hmm. beating him in an MMA match at Bellator. Anthony celebrating afterwards. Nate threw a bottle at him. They were going to jump him. AJ's there on crutches. AJ says, I ain't going to let you guys do nothing to him. He's with me. You do what you do. When I'm not around, that's on you. But right now, I'm not going to sit and watch you jump him. So then that created a beef. Um, then there's a back and forth talking. Um, unfortunately, you know, this is a physical sport. And when you have people disrespect you and you're a fighter, you know, you, you do what you got to do. And, uh, you know, it led from one thing to the next. And the next thing you know, everybody's ready to fight. You know, we come from that life. We're with that life. We're about that smoke. If you really want to go there, expect fire. But, you know, again, I try to keep it cordial and calm. And let's just make this a business and, and keep it entertainment for the fans and do it in the ring where it's legit. AJ would fight Nate, would, would fight Nate Diaz, no problem. And that's what I was about to ask you. What do you fight about 170? If that's is that a possible matchup, maybe later down the road? Absolutely. AJ's got. And you know, the funny part is that Nate, AJ was Nate was AJ's favorite fighter, and wow. now he's his enemy. Wow. Uh, but again, you can't put Nate in the same category with AJ McKee. Nate and Nick. You know, I got a lot of respect for Nick, but you know, Nate's a young, 
thug, doesn't know whether he's going to act right or act wrong. Um, Nate, you know, he got a lot of stuff going on, man. And I don't, like I said, I don't like to talk bad about anybody, but the fact of the matter, the truth is the truth. And, you know, you're barking up the wrong tree. Yeah, and I've seen you down here a couple times in Miami. I mean, Hollywood, Florida, and Miami, training some bare-knuckle fighters, some people in the PFL, and you had Abigail Montez, of course, you were training with, which wasn't revealed, you know. It wasn't made something super public, but you were down there, and I saw you in the corner. Uh, how did you feel about her going into that fight against Clarissa Shields? And do you feel she can compete in that 155-pound women's division and defeat the okay. likes of Kayla Harrison? You know, first of all, they brought her in to lose to Carissa Shields. No disrespect yeah. to Carissa Shields, but when she first got to me, I just like, look, you got to train with me every day, twice a day in order for us to win this fight. Because she just wasn't where I thought she needed to be for this fight. Yeah. Her conditioning wasn't there. It was a lot of stuff that wasn't working. Her wrestling wasn't there. But you know what? She committed to training with me twice a day. I told her it wasn't even about the money. I want to see you win. And I think, in fact, that they would have known it was me training her, they wouldn't have gave her that fight because she's really a 135-pounder, 140-pounder wow. at bare max. So, you know, the, the, the little short nose razzle dad, little fight crews that you. And then, of course, you go in there and we rain on their holiday. That's what we do. The body shop, we're very calm. We're very consistent with our wins. We're very respectful. And, uh, you know, I, I'm creating some problems. I think I'm one of the best coaches in the world, pound for pound full spectrum i just think the world is they haven't given me that platform to stand on and it's sad because when you are a person like me and this is how you make a living who's going to talk about it they're not going to tell you what a great coach i am on the platform there's so much bias and racial issues in this sport that it's ridiculous but if i say the wrong things then my son gets ridiculed so you have to be very cautious how i speak and what i say but at the end of the day, we know what this is, and this ain't nothing that ain't, this is no new information about a uh, black man in America. Yeah, and do you feel that that's maybe why that you haven't been mentioned for a coach of the year? Because you've coached so many people to be champions, so many people in different areas. You know, you don't, you're not getting enough of that recognition. And of course, I give you that recognition all the time because you are one of the greatest coaches right now. What do you have to say to people who are not giving you that? You know what? You can only hold and slow me down. You can't stop me. From the first title when we walked into Bellator, they had no idea who Emmanuel Newton was. We knocked out Mo Law. We became the champ. From Rampage Jackson to, man, I can't even, from Chris Cyborg. Like, I don't even care about the, the, the people. It's more of the quality because I want to help people who need help, who actually could be a world champion. There's just so much favoritism in gyms. And if you're not from AKA American top team, or, you know, you're from a local place, you get, you get looked at like you're not a fighter. Unfortunately, I'm going to be the one that you're going to say, damn it, them damn body shop boys. Here they come again. And, you know, I'm just doing, like I said, I'm doing God's work, but at the same time, I'm trying to help people to become successful in life, not just in fighting. That's awesome. That's a wonderful message. And Antonio, of course, thank you for coming on, man. I appreciate it big time. What do you see and envision for 2022 for AJ and for yourself? What's the biggest accomplishments you want to have for this year? You know what? I want to have a new world champion beside my son, whether it's Jalen Bates, Joey Davis, uh, Shakita. I mean, I've got some, some tough talent. I would just like to see another addition to the body shop uh a champion another champion undefeated absolutely and i just have to ask you this question before we before we, i let you go here francis and ganu cyril gain are taking on each other heavyweight matchup you're a coach you're when watching. is that i'm sure that's in two weeks okay who do you who do you got who do you think wins that fight i think francis nagano is gonna 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 win i think he's you know despite what i hear and what people call and tell me about him not being dedicated to training. He's such a hard hitter that if he goes in shape and he weathers the storm, I think he's going to knock this guy out. Who's going to knock him out? It's true. I, I, we have not seen that done before. That dude ain't I, got a neck. He's like, oh, <laughs> boo -boo -la -boo. You know? <laughs> all boo. He's all busted. All busted there. I told you, anything you want to say to the people watching out there and the people, man, you know, loving say, the body shop, man. I just want to 
you know, just very, you know, a lot of people don't do this, but I just want to play. I want to pray for your listeners who are watching, uh, who are listening. I want to pray for you. And I want to pray for those who aren't as fortunate um, that God blesses them and continue to bless your show. So, uh, you know, dear Heavenly Father, I ask that I'm very thankful for what you've done and what you continue to do in my life and in others' lives. And as you continue to give me the light to shine in those other people's lives, I will continue to do your job and your word and deliver your word, Lord. We ask that uh, you just continue to bless the radio talk show and the people that are behind it. And that uh, whatever the good that comes with it, the glory goes to you. Whatever the bad that comes with it, the glory goes to you. And we just continue to give you all praise in Jesus' name. We pray, amen. That's amen. it, man. I just, you know, I had to amen. do that because we need more of that in the world and not so much hate and not so much uh, of the opposite. But, you know, how often do you get the love that I'm trying to give? Absolutely, Antonio. I appreciate it so much. We'll talk soon, of course. I'll talk to AJ soon at some point as well. Okay. I appreciate you. Thank you for the I'll prayer, I'll see if I can get AJ on there with you today. I'm going to text him and tell him to do an interview with you right quick, thank, okay? Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. We'll talk soon. All right, man. Have a good one. You too. All right. Okay.